Rev up your engine! Today I'm going to talk about possibly the most common car repair ripoff. And that is, oh, you go to a place they say you need new shocks and struts. I don't know how many times customers have come to me and said, well, I went to this chain repair shop. They said I needed struts and shocks. Could you check it out, Scotty? And I checked it out. I couldn't find anything wrong with them. It is a numero uno moneymaker for shops that are somewhat on the shady side. Today, I'm going to show you how to check them out and how to replace them if necessary. Now we'll take this Forerunner as an example. You can see that's 386,000 miles. So you certainly can expect that the shocks and struts are going to be worn out, but let's take it for a road test and see. Now when we hit dips, like the one coming up, it does have a little bit of a bouncy feel to it in the front. More of a highway and see what it does at higher speeds. As we take off, it's not particularly shaking. I don't feel any real loss of control, and I certainly don't feel the back end swaying around. Driving at highway speeds and then you hit a bump and it starts shaking, pretty good idea that they're worn out. This doesn't even do that yet, it's just a little bouncy in the front. And like I say, it really doesn't corner all that bad, especially for a vehicle with 386,000 miles on it, so they're not outrageously worn. And when you come to a relatively fast stop like this, you don't particularly lose control, all the stuff in the back rattles around, but it's not that bad. If we stopped and the back bounced up and down, you'd know the back ones are really shot, but it didn't do that. Now when we put my immense weight on the back here, you can see it's holding fine, it's not bouncing up and down, they're not really worn. And when we go under and check them out, we can look here, there's the bottom of the shock there, and you can see it's bone dry right here. There's the bottom bolt, there's the top of the shock in the back, and when we check the other side, it's basically the same thing. You can see, it's dry as a bone. It's not leaking. The shocks and struts, hey, they're full hydraulic fluid, and when they go bad, the seals go bad, the fluid leaks out and leaves a mess all over the place. These are dry as a bone, and they're still working fine. Don't waste your money putting new ones on this. May have 380 something thousand miles, but they're still working fine. Shows you something about Toyota quality, really. Well, now let's mosey on down to the front. Now, as we look under here, we can see it's all wet. This is all leaking fluid. That is like a combo shock and spring, almost like a strut, but that one is starting to leak. So we look at the other side. We can see it's relatively dry. It's starting to seep a little on the top, but when you change these things out, you want an even ride. You want to buy quality replacements and you want to buy them in pairs because you got one style on one side and one on the other. Who knows what squirrely things might happen to the handling. And in the case of buying new ones, you want quality ones. I like KYB. You get what you pay for if you price around correctly. Personally, I've only been doing this for 53 years. I do not like Monroe shocks and struts. Years ago, I got burnt by them, bought a few for customers. They all wore out too fast, didn't handle right. I am not a fan of them. The KYBs, they're pretty good quality. I mean, you can go as high as you want, but for a normal driver like this, who, as you can see, is using it as a work truck, has a bunch of stuff hiding under here. These KYBs are an excellent choice. Off-road guys got a zillion things to check with. You can spend as much money as you want. Driving around like he is on roads and stuff, these are fine. They're going to last a long time. Don't go too cheap. You don't have to go uber expensive. But the KYBs, from my experience, they hold up over time, and you get your money's worth. You don't want to do all the work and find out, oh, it rides worse, or next year they start leaking again. I had Monroe's go bad in 12,000 miles. The last set that I put on years ago, and I vowed I'll never use them again. So we'll mosey in my garage, pass the dog flap, and we'll fire up the compressor. We'll put on the old gloves. It's a little bit cold, and I don't like getting dirty anyways. I'm a strange man. Mechanic. We'll roll out the old jack, throw the old mat down, get out the old jack stands. Now when you're jacking up a vehicle, you want a solid point to jack it on. In this case, this has got a solid frame. It's very easy to jack up a solid frame car. You just jack it up on the frame. And in this case, since you're doing the front ones, you just jack it up until the front wheel comes off the ground. There she goes. Now we'll take the wheel off and see what we got to deal with here. 
A lot easier with air tools. You can use an electric wrench if you want. Now I'll stick the solid steel stand right on here. In case anything happens, odds are it won't. It's a flat surface. But just to be on the safe side, make sure you got it in park with the emergency brake on. Full blast so nothing rolls. And if you're worried about locking stuff up, I leave the key in and roll the window down. So if locks go on, you can always reach inside. A smart move. Though it took me years to actually do that consistently until I got locked out once. Now I do it all the time. Now you got a good view. You can see how wet this thing is. It's just all worn out. So we got to take it off. The bottom bolts off and the top has three bolts that you bolt off. Now the top ones here are 14 millimeter. They're on super tight. So here's a trick. Get yourself a big old hammer. Hit it. That starts it. Then you can easily get them off. And twirl the rest off with your fingers. And to make it even easier, get some WD-40 and spray the top. That way, it'll come off and go back together easier. Then they'll spray a little WD-40 on the bottom bolt. When we get it loose, here's a trick. Don't take it the whole way off. Leave it sticking out. You don't want to bugger up the threads. To get that bolt out, now you can hit it. And you see it's coming out. Now you can take this off and get it off the rest of the way. Then we can get a little extension like this and hit it the rest of the way out. And since it's a big truck, to make the job easier, you can get a bottle jack, stick it on the bottom. Then when you jack it up, the holes will line up better. Makes the job a lot easier. Then you can remove the whole assembly. As you can see, since the shock is inside, they're the same number, KG9025. KG9025. Right and left are the same. The only problem with this design is the spring's under pressure. You gotta compress it in order to change them. So out come the springs. Or spring removal tools, I should say. But I do have to say, it says Toyota, these are the original ones. They lasted 386,000 miles, so pretty well made, you know? Now you screw the spring compressors on, one on each side. You just get them snug. You want one on each side, we'll get this one snug, and we'll do the other side. Then you have both spring compressors on, you get them nice and tight, and you can loosen the top and it won't fly off all over the place. Now it's a lot easier with power tools. You can do hand tools, but it's a lot more work. That's why have power tools. Ah. Ah. Off it comes. You notice it didn't fly off and hit me. If I wouldn't have put the spring compressors on, it would have flown off. Then with a little pulley, out comes the old worn out one. Now you notice the kit comes with all the new plastic parts and bushings, so you put them on, then slide it inside here. And there's a trick. If you forgot how it went on, you can see there's marks on here where the spring fits. So what do you do? You line that mark up here. It fits right on there. You get it here, fits right on. A rubber on, a little metal washer, and a new nut it comes with. And make sure you get it on nice and tight. <laughs> then you can loosen the clamps. A little bit on each side till they come off. Here's another tip. Make sure that's in the notch. You can see right here it's in the notch, so it's going to be adjusted right. So we'll hammer it back on, then take it off. Guess what? Where there's a will, there's a way. And there's another tip. I will often get the old nut, put it on top, so this one can't come off. It's a smart move. It won't come apart now. Then we just have to put it back together again. Isn't this fun? That slides in here. You line up the holes. Not always that easy to do either. Then once you get them through the holes, quick, put some nuts on it so they don't fall down. Then tighten the top one so you can get the bottom on easier. You want it as high as it goes. They're long threads, so it takes a little while and there's not much working room. You want it as high as it can go. And now I got it easier than I used to have, because I used to do this by sticking it under my armpit with one arm and pull with the other. But I got a grandson <laughs> here now, and he's gonna get the giant screwdriver to pull it down so we can line the screw up. All we have to do is get the bolt through. And sometimes you gotta wiggle them a little like this. And I find the easiest is once you start it, you get your air wrench and we can generally screw it in. Ta-da! Now you might think, how does Scotty do it by himself in the past? Well, guess what? This goes under my left arm with the right arm pulling. It's a lot easier with two people. Put the wheel back on. Always fun with a heavy vehicle. I'm getting old and weak. I gotta use my legs now. Well, it happens to the best of us. And of course, then I gotta do the other side too, but I'm not gonna show you the long, boring process of the other side. It's exactly the same as this side. So the next time somebody tells you you need shocks or struts on your vehicle, now you know not to take their word for it. Check it out yourself. And if necessary, 
do it yourself because even if you're not going to do it yourself i've seen disreputable mechanics spray the old ones they'll have a little bottle of oil in their pocket they'll spray them and they'll say look see they're leaking you need new ones if you check it yourself they're not leaking you'll know you don't need to change them yet you're not going to get ripped off that way because unfortunately there's a lot of crooks out there i have seen so many people pay for shocks and structs that they didn't need now you know how to check them and if you want to try it yourself change them out yourself so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell